Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 4th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just literally a few days after updating its operating systems, Apple today released another update for macOS, iOS, iPadOS, as well as watchOS, fixing a number of different vulnerabilities that are currently actively been exploited. All these vulnerabilities are affecting WebKit, which is Apple's browser engine. Didn't see an update for Safari itself. Usually Apple does publish sort of a standalone update for older versions of Safari. So that may still be coming. Also unclear at this point if any other browsers that use WebKit are affected. There appear to be two core vulnerabilities that are being addressed here. CVE 2021, 3066 5, and then 3066.3. The first one is a memory corruption issue. The second one, an integer overflow, both reported by different researchers. Now there's also an update for the older version of iOS, iOS 12.5, which I believe is the oldest iOS version still supported for devices that don't support iOS 14.5. This older version of iOS is affected by a total of four different vulnerabilities. WatchOS only suffers from the memory corruption issue. So the quick summary, get patching and no public uh, exploit yet available for these vulnerabilities, but given that it has already been exploited, that's probably not too far out. And talking about patching, I hope uh, you applied all the patches that Microsoft released a couple weeks ago, in particular the ones for Exchange. Turns out that we do have the first proof of concept exploit that was made public for one of the four Exchange vulnerabilities that was patched with this last update. CVE 2021-28482, the exploit was published to GitHub. And it demonstrates a code execution by launching MS Paint. Of course, it should be relatively straightforward to replace MS Paint with whatever binary one would like to launch. And yes, we do have another side channel attack, this time affecting Intel AMD as well as ARM processors. Now, uh, these processors have one thing in common, and that's a micro ops cache. As complex operations are being processed by uh, these uh, processors, they are broken down to into uh, these uh, simpler uh, micro ops, and the micro ops cache is actually an on chip part of the CPU, making of course a repeat execution of these micro ops very fast. But as usual, by sharing a cache between trusted, untrusted user, kernel, and uh, other processes, information may leak from one to the other. Also, because this happens before anything gets executed, uh, many of the older workarounds for Spectre and the like uh, don't prevent this new attack. In the end, this comes down to a privilege escalation vulnerability, so we'll have to see if this develops into any sort of practical exploits later on, but at this point, it doesn't really look like there's too much uh, that you can do about it as an end user. Well, uh, maybe there are some microcode patches or such coming uh, later. And Pulse Secure now released an update for its uh, VPN product. Uh, the vulnerability, of course, was announced uh, last week, but at the time there was sort of no real uh, timeline available as to when a patch would be released. Well, you got it available now, so if you're running Pulse Secure, yet something else for you to patch and patch quickly as these vulnerabilities are already being exploited. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.